I'm not ever around too much snow. I hear it's nice for a few days and then it gets kind of tiresome. Cool. In this game? I don't think so. You mean Maria? You, you die. You want to know the fastest clock you can get? Uh... 950-ish. If you want a good clock, about 950. Oh, there's an 820 seed, but you have to be really lucky with that one. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. Yeah, um... You promised you'd take me there again someday. You likely are going to be getting 950. Get some good rest, Gert. Take it easy. I'm just studying the seeds a little bit here. Now, don't get me wrong. You could get a faster clock, but a faster clock doesn't matter if your rest of the endgame RNG isn't very good. You care about the whole enchilada. It's not just one thing. You want all of it. No, I'm not talking about Chicken Little this time. Chicken Little talks so much relevant. Does the calculation efficiently? Alright, but keep in mind, one, I'm a human being. Two, the current meta for randomizing this is brute forcing it as quickly as possible. From what I can tell on the table I have, what you're getting is essentially, within the first 50, the best one's going to be like a 950. Keep in mind, you're not going to be able to force the seed in a certain way. You're going to be getting a certain seed. Like, if you can force whatever seed you want, then that's different. But, uh, I'm not a robot. I'm a human being. A human being. So, ideally, what I get is actually, uh, one of the worst ones. I get fucking 21. I get, like, 23 all the time, which is a 245. The worst one. Um, but you can, you know, depending on how you roll it, depends. I tell you something a robot would say. If I was a robot, I'd be doing a lot better than I am right now. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much, Spastigilla Rats. Also, how's it going, Volo? Hope you're doing good. And uh, the table really varies. Also, the problem is, even getting a good clock, if you get a bad, you know, arsonist, it might not be worth it. Curious what the most efficiency that was that waifu found? I don't know. The problem is, you have to look through every seed, and you have to find the most optimal one. And also, with runners, they're mostly going to be getting within the first 30. Like, I usually average around anywhere from, I think, 15 to 30. I don't think I've ever gotten in the first 10. I got 18 recently. That's actually a really good seed. Um, I usually get 23, which is kind of a rough seed. But even then, just the knowledge of having the seeds better than having a good seed. Or seeing a seed's more feasible on PS2? No, that's not really the case. It's more the fact of, you know... I can force a seed if I want to. It's just kind of... Forcing a seed's not really an easy feat by any means. Yeah, yes, it's based on the clock, but the problem is it's rolling on the first clock on the certain frames. So like, there's a list of frames. Like, I know how the seed rolling works. It's more the case of, all right, can I roll number 18 every time? No? Well, I'm not resetting over that. I don't know what that is, Bola. Truly ideal? I can find a good seed on number 18. It's not a bad seed. Or actually, here's a good seed right here. Um, one. Frame number one is a very good seed. Are you going to get it? No, it's actually impossible to menu that quickly. Ideally... Hell, 25. 1103. D. Blind Arsonist. Good numbers. Seems like a dice roll. It is a dice roll. For most human beings, it's not going to matter all that much. Like, look, here, here's a thing on the RNG. Hear me out. It's possible you skip the opening stuff, but we can just manipulate it. And also, this kind of goes to the second part and more off. Knowing the seeds won't really make a huge difference in RNG if you're competing against someone who also knows their seeds. What it changes is maybe like, I don't know, 
a worst of 10 seconds on the clock at the absolute worst and something like one got best one got worse like maybe you got 10. arsonist is literally less than five maybe only like a three briefcase is virtually nothing just assume it's all the same and then um if you're not on hard mode the the faces don't matter so you really only have a couple seeds that matter Difference clock for RNG time. The clock is something you still can't control, and in all honesty, it won't make or break your run. Like, if it is, your name is Punchy. If your name is Punchy, it will make or break your run. If your name is not Punchy, it will not make or break your run. Like, No worries, Alias. No worries. Can always happen in time. What's good, God Gone? Hope you're doing good. How's it going to snap into a Tim Jim? Hope you're doing nicely. Like, one of the big things is the amount of time you save with the RNG Manip in comparison to other RNG Manip isn't that much. Now, RNG Manip to regular RNG is a fuck ton. That's the difference. If you're just doing RNG Manip to RNG Manip, though, it won't matter all that much. Like, it's maybe less than 20 max like assuming one person got the absolute dumpstered worst rng at every facet they can get it and the other person got the best at every moment they can get it it's probably about 20 but even then like finding a truly perfect seed would require you to dig deep and also the problem with mentioning console is currently world records are on pc so at that point, since PC and console are still compared to each other, for the most part, on the same leaderboard, sure, you can manipulate that there, but then you end up losing out on the out-of-bounds and the other tricks you can do on PC, like the boss fight skips. Is a good day? That's good. To other PC runners, even then... Yeah. As long as you're manipulating RNG, you have a decent amount of time save that's just free. This isn't me being a braggart or anything. Literally, you do the RNG manipulation. You get free time. Just just do it. It's really easy. Yeah, there's a lot of seeds. Just find the best one. Days in a row is great. That's good. That's really good. Good shit. And also, this kind of goes on to... Oh, you hit a natural you get a run from the gods. Well, then keep going. Or if it dies of something stupid, that's, that's your fault. There's a lot more human element in speedrunning than one would imagine. I know human element's the mean. But the whole thing is, even with a good RNG, you still need to be a good runner to make do with it. Just kind of getting the good RNG won't land someone a world record in most cases, unless the game's 100% RNG. Hell, there's a reason why many of the world records in this game kind of stand. And also, some RNG can't really be manipulated. I mean, you can try, but... Me streaming? I mean, I usually stream like four days in a row on the weeks. Most weeks, I stream like five, actually. I just streamed Saturday because, uh, what's the word? GDQ. I had the show. That was a good show. Okay, what do we got? We got, uh, fucking 449. Badass. What seed are we? I probably got like 20 ish. Four forty nine, I'll check in a moment, but I know what seed I got. Also, oh I got twenty two by the way. Remember I said I mostly get around the twenties? I'm very consistent getting around twenty, twenty two, twenty one. Last one if you're wondering what I got, I got twenty one. I'm very consistent on getting around that one area of time. So here's the RNG manipulation. I got four forty eight on my clock. What's that mean? <gasps> Numbers, 7833, 7817. Worst arsonist, time is the word. South and down for the hat, or the head. Don't say that I'll screw myself, what, my RNG? My RNG is mediocre. <clears throat> Able to fix it? I had to buy a new copy. I bought a brand new copy of the game on digital. I had to buy two copies of Unsold On. Luckily, uh, people in chat helped, uh, you know, they, they donated for the, the very minor Until Dawn fund. So, it was all good. Also, uh, 
Metal Dirt Monkey gifted Mana Medan so we could play that soon, and I bought Little Hope from GameStop, so. It looks like we can do all of them. Was it worth it? Yeah, I really liked Until Dawn. I thought it was a really good game. Like, if I didn't like the game, I would not have bought it. I would not have bought it twice. Is it possible to kill everyone in Until Dawn? Oh, fuck yeah, you can. You don't want to, but you can. Like, it's just one of those things. Oddly enough as well, even though this category isn't the most competitive, I would argue this is actually a pretty tough world record to beat, given that it stood as long as it has. Like, I haven't been able to beat it, really. Um, there's another runner who does this game who hasn't really beat it yet. He beat, he beat my old one. How's it going, A-bomb? That would be doing good. And exactly middle of their monkey. It's a bit sad? It seems a bit sad. Ah, yes, indeed. Ah, yes, indeed. And in the world of Silent 2, there's always new runners coming in, which is always nice. And honestly, they compete pretty well. If you're wondering, generally, what is the marker of Silent 2, like, a lot of games will have marker runners, I would say. They're, they're runners that, they are the milestone. They are, they are the gate. And what does the gate refer to? If you can beat that runner's time, it usually refers to retired runners who are no longer, you know, in the community. If you can beat that runner's time, you are a solid runner of whatever game you're doing. And a good example of this is there was a legendary runner of this game. Oh, uh, God, I'm trying to remember his name. I have to look it up. I'm, I'm, it doesn't work out on the example. But he used to run this game years ago. Kind of. Kind of like that, Kilkostic. Like, they have that time. Super Gamer. Yes, thank you, Greaser. Thank you very much. Oh, Super Gamer. Super Gamer's a legend. He brought directional movement into this game. He had all the world records before any of the glitches are found. He was a god at this game. And he hasn't ran the game in a while. Probably just, you know, he just, you know, got tired of running games. And nothing wrong with that. But his time still stands as one of the best runs for this game. And he's still in the top, like, top, I think, five, top ten. His run has became one of those runs where if you beat his time, you are a good one. No, it's not always retired dude in speedrunning. It's be like a time that kind of is a relic of the older era. Uh, it's always unfortunate to see. His times still remain, though, and, uh, they're very good times. Like, a good example of M. Night Shyamalan, um, my Little Nightmares time, I have a top 12 time. If you beat that time, you are absolutely a good Little Nightmares runner. I don't use any of the new strats, really, in that run. It was a relic of the older era, and, um, there we go. It essentially means it is a good marker that if you're beating this time, you're, you're in the new. You are, you are... The new cheese. You're, you're good shit. Super Gamer has really good runs. And there's a lot of runs like this where it's kind of like the official definitions. And it's not always a run. It might be a time. Like, a good example, like, getting a 31 in Silent Hill is... You, you are very, very good at that game. Persona 1. Uh, and it can refer to many things. I'm in the nude? No, in the, in the new. And this usually refers to when you have an old run comparing, like, really, really outdated strats that was really good at the time to a new run that's a bit sloppier but uses new strats that ultimately save more time. A good example is uh, when I first beat them, I had the Out of Bounds, I had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of tricks. Am I in the know? I'm pretty good at this game. It's actually kind of weird. This is probably the best Silent Hill game. I don't know why this one stuck to me as much as it did, but I, I really love this one. Probably because I like the game as much as I do. Like, th those runs do exist, or beating that run means you are now the, uh, you're, you're in the, you're, you're in the higher end of the, of the, of the leaderboard. I do not know the Muffin Man, no. I'm not in the know about that one. Like, hell, what's another good example I'm trying to think of? Uh... There's some old Legend of Zelda ones. I mentioned my Little Nightmares one. Uh, Dead Rising currently has it with a guy named Don. Uh, he hasn't been around in a while. Uh, a lot of his old Dead Rising times were really good. So if you manage to beat one of those, um, you know you're you're in the new you're in the new shit. One, by the way. Nice. That being said, though, and a big thing about speedrunning, I mentioned the whole idea of a gatekeeper on that skill. But most speedrunning is your own personal challenge. What about for Remothered? Technically, my run's actually uh, that sense. We don't have enough runners in Remothered is the problem. My old run would technically be the one for that one. 
Well, five more. Cool. That's not bad. How's it going, Beanie? Hope you're doing good. Mm. Good cracks. That was a clean fucking fight, by the way. Let's see. But yes. Do remember, though, for the most part, speedrunning is your own personal challenge. You don't need to be the top leaderboard to be a good speedrunner. You can only have markers that you can try to achieve, but for the most part, you are your own competition in speedrunning. Unless you want to make it otherwise. I don't really, uh see too much in terms of, uh, what's the word? Normally, whenever I learn a game, I don't go for world record immediately unless it's a small leaderboard where the only merit is world record. And very often, I'll go like, oh, I want to get this time. I want to do that. I want to do this. And it's very uh, based in the very early thing of, alright, I just want a good time. And then when I find out, oh, fuck, I'm like right there. And then I'm like, okay, let's get world record. And we're hoping, Greaser. We're hoping. Hope you have a good time going bedwards. I like that name. Get some good sweeb. Get some good rest. But a lot of games also have a rich history, and it's quite nice. And also, I guess the case of speedrunning as well, a lot of older runners will tend to kind of drop off at one point or another. Like, maybe they'll do a bunch of tight runs in a, in a game, and then just drop off. Nothing wrong with that. People move, people do things, people don't have the same passions they used to, or they change their passions. Hell, one of the best Silent Hill runners apparently went on to bet on horse races. Apparently he does pretty well with it. The only reason I bring that up is because every time someone mentioned him is that they mentioned that he loved to gamble. And then he mentioned, he came into my stream and also told me that he loved to gamble. And he won a lot of money doing it. Not that this is a, you know, marketing campaign for gambling, mind you. It just, apparently he really liked betting on horse races. I, I don't really hear people do that often. I don't really know enough racetracks. But, uh... Yeah, he jumped from speedrunning to horse ra horse racing. And that guy was like the goat of Silent Hill 1 for many, many years. Like, he inspired pretty much a generation of Silent Hill 1 runners. If it wasn't for him, Silent Hill 1 probably... Actually, hell, the Silent Hill series as a whole probably wouldn't uh, have the devout speedrunning tech it has. A rich history. A guy named Ekude. Weirdly enough, and I mentioned this, and I'll mention it again. I want my YouTube channel to get to a certain size before I do it. But I want to make a Silent Hill World Record progression video. I have all the information for the most part. I need to just kind of keep tabs on the latest couple runs. But I know the run well enough. I've seen so many runs. I should have that. Remember to say the game? Yeah, I am, Red Ocean. Yeah, I am. I interviewed a lot of people. I have all the tools needed to make this VOD. It is sort of the matter of actually doing it. Kind of like Carsey's video is more like Summoning Salt. Like, world record progression. Yeah, kind of like that show, Buck. I have all the tools for it. I have all the data. I, have, I wrote everything down. I even have a script, I think. Um, I have all the chapters I'm breaking it down towards. I have literally decades of Silent Hill information. So... Yep. It just, I didn't want the video to flounder if I ever made it. So I'm waiting until I can get a slightly bigger YouTube channel. So even if I were to release it, it would do good on its own without needing to luck out. Because I do feel like a decent amount of YouTube is luck. Not all of it. There's definitely a lot of merit and skill that goes into it. But, you know, I'd want to catch it the right way. Well, my zombies that made my neighbor's video did fine, but like, I would want the Silent Hill video to be, like, out of this world, Vine, you know? I don't want it to just be good. I want it to be amazing. I want it to be stellar. I want it to be up there, so to speak. So it's a good thing. The Jams of Zam? Hey, Zombies of a Neighbors video is actually good. I'd probably do another one at some point. People seem to like that. It's also actually really weird that when I made actual videos, I want to do more, by the way, at some point. I don't know what, but I'll do something. Uh, I did Zombies with My Neighbors when I first started doing Maryland Commentary, and then I did Sweet Home, and then the same exact thing happened. 
Yeah, I made a good Sweet Home one, but the problem is I made it about Sweet Home. And uh, Sweet Home is a pretty good gem, but it's uh, Sweet Home. The Zam video is really good. It is a very good video. I already know what the next video I want to do is, though. I'm not going to say anything, because the problem is, whenever you say you do something, it doesn't happen. So I'm not going to say what I'm doing yet. Just understand, I, I, wanna, I have a couple of projects I want to work on, and they're already existing. See, the 300 IQ move would be to make a YouTube video about how Chicken Little is actually an ugly bastard hentai. Okay, what did I say, Ron? 22? Take it easy, Lunas. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. What got me doing speedruns? I was an IT guy. Such is the nature of IT work. You're on your computer a lot. You're chilling. It looked interesting, so I was like, hey, I want to try that. I had a co- Oh, hold on. Uh, 7833. 7833. And uh, 7817. Good. No, that's fine. 22 is great, Clubhouse. I can't like 22. Boo, I say. Boo. But, uh, yeah, I was an IT guy, and I don't know about you guys, but for anyone who works IT, um, you end up uh, being on your computer a lot. And what you do on your computer may vary per person, but I worked with a bunch of dudes, and I they liked to watch Twitch. So I was like, sure, I'm down. And then they would put on games, and one guy put on Bloodborne speedrunning. And then I was like, cool, I like Bloodborne. That seems interesting. I never played the game, but it looks cool. And that's how I got into speedrunning. And then later on... Um, I ended up uh, learning about more, and my brother showed me the awkward GDQ video that everybody knows about. And then, I, at the same time, I watched uh, Mario Runners, because I was into Sunshine as a kid. So, like, I like this game. It's a fun game. Is die? You are dead, badass. Don't kick me. Thank you. Wow, that should worked. This is a perfect fight, by the way. I think. As long as I don't get grabbed. Badass. Oh, I can get the death hit, too. Yep. Look at that. Perfect fight. And you spawn right here. So the general idea, though, as well, I fire about three before they grab, before they will automatically grab me if I try to fight back. Oh my! This is golden. Hey, Vixie, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Fucking call. Look at that shit. That was clean. Also, I don't know. Trouble... Trouble yelled at me. If you're wondering what I like for Taylor Swift, I like style. Style was a banger. I'm doing good. Can't complain. I'm talking about, uh... It's Taylor Swift jams. There's a few conversations, but Taylor Swift seems like the better one to follow up on. As far as I can tell. Okay. Also, like I mentioned with a game like this, I never mind if I lose a run. One of these bosses have to do with this being his personal hell. Well, Silent 2 is really the only one that explores this, but the personal hell is more in the fact of, uh... I'm pretty sure Flesh Lips is a reference to his wife. You have the hanging beds. I really need to tell you what Flesh Lips is an innuendo for. Sexuality being a big thing in this game. and That was her nickname? Honestly, not even memeing. Just understand, this game is but my dead wife. But my great knife. That's how it goes. Correct. Because James uh, had a lot of issues. But that's why he was called the Town of Silent Hill. 
Which is really weird, because this is really the only main line of the Team Salt games that explores the theme of this town being a punishment. Really, like, Sonal 1 doesn't do this, Sonal 3 doesn't really do this. So, I'm pretty sure Sonal 4... I don't think it... I think it doesn't do it for at least Henry. It kinda does it for Walter, but I wouldn't really, like... It's not in the way that 2 is. There's not the representations of a person's psyche, but... Really, this is the only one that is based on the people themselves, and not, like, based on the... Uh, Travis? Team Silent. Did you know Travis abused women? That that's all that game is. Just say that the entire time, you're about good. That's all that game fuck it just drills in the head to you. T Origins was the first of the Western games, and it's not bad, but it definitely loses some of its flair. Nope. Origins was made to be similar to Team Silent, but it is the uh, Western devs, which is not Team Silent. So Origins does not fall into that. Anyway, the fall, by the way. Quiet and all, right? From what I've heard, at least, Team Silent was only 1 to 4. Oh, sorry! Team Silent was more than that. Team Silent was 1 to 4 and Play Novel. How could I forget about Play Novel? The Chad game. All right, say goodbye to parking lot, everyone. Parking lot. <laughs> I never get tired of four parking lot. I'm so happy I found that glitch. Of all the dumb things I can find in this game, that was my favorite one. Just poor parking lot, our favorite character. She died. She died as she lived. Filled with cars? Alright. How do parking lots live? I just not really sentient beings, but that'd be like... Cars, right? Do parking lots do anything else instead of have cars and teenagers drinking in them? Or people drinking in them, I should say. Not exclusive to teenagers, but people. Parking lot has a purpose? Like an actual one, not, 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 uh, not Maria. Empty? Oh, I like that one even sports. That one's way better. Making donuts? Ah, yes. So cars. Yes, that counts as a car. Unless you literally mean some way opening up a bake, like a bakery and crafting donuts in the parking lot. I like EM Sports ones better. EM Sports. Empty. Oh. <laughs> See, that's depressing. <laughs> Again, that's cars. That's the general nature of cars. And these are all things you can do in cars. Without naming cars, what do you do in a parking lot? Because that just boils back down to cars. I think empty is the best answer. Poor Maria, goddamn. I don't know, Tekkenandrum. I do not know, nor do I particularly want to know. What I want to know is if this run's going to go the distance. I fucking hope it does. I can save literal minutes on several points if I just... Get a gold everything. Which, really enough, that I know that sounds hard, like, oh, I just get a gold. Like, if I just get a good final boss, we can do it. I just, the final boss is such a hard strat. Also, multiple people have found, like, including me, have found uh, manipulation for it. The problem is, is it's so goddamn inconsistent. It only happens every now and again. There's no way to replicate it. He's going for speed? I am. Just go fast. That's all you gotta do. In speedrunning, just go fast. Uh, well, actually, kind of going to the meme of that. I've actually been hearing the take on Twitter today, and uh, in a few ways. But uh, a lot of speedrunners especially get uh, say this one. It's a very common speedrunning uh, thing. And yeah, I have capital L. We'll see how it goes. But uh, a lot of speedrunners say this thing right here. You're going to hear it. And it happens a lot in world records. Oh, dude, my run was terrible. And meanwhile, they're like the literal top of the leaderboard. Also, man, that was a bit sloppy. 
Apparently a lot of people don't like people saying that. They don't like people saying this run was garbage when a world record holder gets a world record but not the one they wanted. I get it though. I do get it. But I think I feel like it's just two sides misunderstanding each other. Most people who say it are more likely on the beating themselves up route. That like five times? It, exactly. It's just like it's it's the world record classic, and the reason why is the world record holder knows in their own area, like, oh, I, sh I should be playing better than this. So, to them, it's not the best of their capabilities, so it's trash for them. Well, it's not even a huge gap, it's usually just, like, an understanding of, like, oh, I could have played that so much better. Like, my most recent Saha 1 PB, like, I knew, god, I fucked up so much in it. I fucked up so much on it. And it is like an odd mentality, but I don't think it's ever a malicious mentality. I don't think anyone's ever going into, uh, going into a speedrun and going like, I'm gonna insult all the other runners today. I think it's usually more of a point of like, you know, they're very much in their own mind. It's a very innocent thing that I, I do understand as well. Well, no, the problem, it's beating yourself up about it. To the runner, it's just a normal thing that carried over from the SDA days. Because back in the old days of SDA, it was very much a common place where runners would only submit the best of the best. So they wanted to make sure there was the, the area of perfection in that. They needed perfect runs on the leaderboard. It wasn't enough to have a good run, you needed perfection to be on that leaderboard. Brazilian Ghost. Nice. Very nice. Well, I'd say you needed a nice run to be on that leaderboard. If you're wondering why, it's because SDA was more of a showcase, not really a leaderboard. And that being said, they only wanted... Like, a very, very good shit up there. So, kind of adding on to this, though, what happens is, obviously, when you have communities, like, let's say... We'll, we'll use the example of Sanho Ho One. Um, uh, you have world record holders saying, oh, this run is dead, this run is garbage. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's not a bad thing. Ema Sports, nice. Very nice. We have two nices. A double nice. Two nices. But when you have other runners looking up to that... It makes it sound like their run is garbage, and the inflection from that could, in a sense, weigh down saying, Oh, anything beneath me is garbage. No one is ever saying that when they're saying their run is garbage. It's usually just very much a self-reflective thing of wanting to do better. Which, yeah. And also there's the other end, which I, I know I'm guilty of this one every now and again, but saying things are free. I'm not too guilty of saying things are free. I do believe there's a lot of merit in learning these games. And again, usually I think people are referring to their own area. But, yeah, I guess just kind of the wording in competitive spheres can be kind of weird. As I know in RE2, what, there's the meme that dogs are free? I don't know if that's ironic or not. I don't know if my RE2 make to know if dogs are free is ironic or not. The stream is free? It is. Or, it can be, be free of ads with Prime Gaming. There's the one prime gaming show I make every once in a blue moon. Exactly, Bone Zone. Exactly, Purple Drank. The Bone Zone. I don't know why I said Bone Zone first. I got the bones in the zone. You know what I'm saying. But yeah, on my end... I feel like my runs are pretty decent. This category could definitely be better, but... There's a lot of work put into this. Shockingly enough... And there's been a lot of uh, improvements over the older route that we've taken. Hell, the fact that I actually rng me up the faces now is actually really good. I used to not do that. You deal with that, damn. You deal with the ads, however will I live. So, I've been hearing a lot of sizing on Twitter, so I just felt they would bring it up. I still get paid? True. But I don't get to see the dank scissors in chat. Actually, I mean, in fairness, though, Sneaky also has a sub, so they don't deal with ads. So it doesn't even work in that sense. They're burying the lead. Ads don't bother you? It depends on the ad for me. Usually I don't mind because whenever I watch Twitch, I'm very active in something else. Like, dude, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm watching Twitch my own time off, I'm throwing games of TFT. I am losing so many goddamn games of TFT. So very often, I'm kind of just in my game, choking. And then I'll notice, oh hey, we're back on the show. 
Oh, my back. And that's the way of YouTube. Wait, we're doing good right now. Holy shit. Honestly, not a bad run right now. This is actually pretty tight. Thank you. So I enjoy it. Although I do have to wonder what this uh, category would be like if it had more competition. Admittedly, there's like five or so runners in this category. And most of them are dormant, barring one of them, I think. I guess what I'd have to do is I'd have to do more of a... Wait, how do you get a free Google Stadia? Also, are you actually going to play on the Google Stadia? Isn't that like... Network, like, network usage to the max? I have to ask. Or is it just a glorified paperweight? See, now I'm curious on the Stadia. You gotta do some Stadia speedrunning. Huh. What a weird thing. Thank you for the follow, by the way. It's much appreciated. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Admittedly, I just kind of bite the bullet on YouTube. I watch a lot from my phone, so I'm like just, meh, I'm chill. A lot of the videos I watch tend to be just from the algorithm. How's it going, Tango? I'm not gonna lie, I watched a lot of the PogChamp videos. Tango, nice. Nice, nice. Okay. Also, I am mad tempted. I am mad tempted to say Dog Champ during the Haunting Ground run. Think about it. I totally can. I can totally say Dog Champ. We're doing Blind Arsonist? Yes, but T-Rex, I should warn you, it's no longer blind. I know the answer already. Also, this one's blind counterfeit because we're on hard mode. The answer is going to be four. Or the fourth spot. I actually got a pretty bad arsonist, but it's okay. Or counterfeit. Nice indeed, though. That's fine. Is this blind run? Oh, what do you mean? You mean like... Have I never played the game before, or... You know, I'm, I'm confused. I can tell you if you're shitposting if you're wondering about the new RNG. Yeah, we figured out the table in multiple ways, so now we're experts on it. Well, I have been manipulating RNG for a good amount of time. Like, watch. RNG is gonna be four, the world will be time, and, uh, the faces are gonna be just sideways and down. I know you're pulling my leg. I like the blind emote though, it's a good emote. But wait, I can totally say dog champ during haunting round. I'm tempted. Is the, is the meme gonna be dead by then is the question. Is the, I guess you are my little pog champ meme gonna be dead? If it's not dead by then, I'm gonna say it. I guess you are my little dog champ, come here. And it'll work. And now I'm checking out. I should have Twitter. No, not Dog Chomp. That was depressing. Let's see. Some good stuff. Alright. How's Shadow? He's good. He was chilling. He was chilling in my bed earlier today. He's a nice boy. A nice doggy. No, you can't have my lungs. I need my lungs. I need all my organs, in fact. They're necessary to my survival. No, no lungs for you. That's like one of my favorite organs. No, I need both my lungs. They're very important. They're very important organs. I'll say that much. Lungs grow back? No, they don't. I've seen the TF2 short. I know lungs don't grow back. Either way, selfish? You're selfish. You can donate lungs. So it all it all works out. I figured out how to get paid on YouTube, by the way. I think I should made it over the threshold at this point. Just a bit dummy when it comes to it. I did. 
Your names look very similar because you have blue palettes. Sweaty, your name used to be yellow and now it's blue and Sneaky's is always in blue. So it's like, wait. You can see how you both end with man. And have similar letters around the middle. Color palettes, man. Color palettes. Exactly, you're always greenish. In the past, Sweaty was always yellow. Confuse me. Good job, Sweaty. Good job. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of see how it all goes. Oh, isn't Chaz that everyone was yellow in? Makes sense. The level best of the raid. By the way, I saw the good news. Then you had a balance list to see. Ooh, there are. How is Resident Evil? Which one are you playing? Are you doing the OG? Are you doing the remake? Hope you had a good time. But level, hope you had a good stream today. How is how would it all go? Hey, we're doing some Sonal 2, which is pretty fun. Um, gun in for the hard mode world record, which may or may not happen. I don't want to say congratulations on the Madagascar. I saw that. I saw the Madagascar dub. What are the color names based on? Oh, you can just pick your name, I think, in certain aspects. I don't know if you need Prime for that, but you can just pick your name, color. If he has not a level, you should, though. He's very nice people, very chill dude. And uh, he'll be running a game at Thunderthon, the OG. Yeah, I know that feeling all too well. Well, hopefully had a good time, that's all that matters. Anyway, check this out. I'm going to manipulate some RNG. And the answer is going to be the fourth one. I'm a magician. For anyone coming in, by the way, if you're wondering who the hell am I, what do I do? I'm McDysis. I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. I like the genre. Spooky games are my shit. I do 92 games, and uh, I like them. They're fun. Anyway, see? Easy peasy. That trick used to be hard. Also, OGRE is pretty tight. I've, I've been seeing a lot of Brando on the director's cut lately. I actually need to replay the OGRE at some point. Oh, I fucking love that. You gotta love when that happens. I was gonna stalking you. What a fun name. We have Diamond Dogs. Welcome, Raiders. Yeah. I'm gonna be learning the big 100 soon. 92. Some of them are shitposts, some of them are duplicates, but in total it is 92 games. Always good to hear, now here's this. Always good to hear. I love seeing runs like that. Like, random PBs are the fucking greatest, man. You need to step your game up? Yeah, I'd say go for it, man. Duplicates? Yeah, like, a good example is while there are different runs, I do run, like, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion Free and Spooky's HD. The thing is, while they're very similar games and fundamentally don't change all that much, there is a, there is a difference. So it isn't exactly fair to say those are, you know, similar games, but they're also not really that different. Also, like an example of this as well, Catherine Full Body and Catherine Classic. Catherine Full Body adds new tech to it, it changes some levels, it adds levels. Catherine Classic mostly keeps the original. So it is kind of weird that these minor game differences do actually matter. But yeah, that's the case. Anyway, let's go. Or even like RE1 OG and RE1 Remake. It'd kind of be like the case. Alright, let's go. Bonk. Bonk. He's dead. Okay, phase two. Oh, we got it. Hold on. Maybe? Yes! Yes! Alright, that's it right there. We have a good run. Hold the fuck all the fuck up. We got a good run. <laughs> we got a good run. Okay, okay, okay. Bonk him? Why does bonk daddy's nuts if you know what I'm talking about? God damn. I worked so hard to get that fight going, and I finally fucking got one. Alright. I can't believe I golded it, too. Yeah, we'll have a good one. We did good, though. We did good. We do have the 4 p.m. emote. Hey, I'm hoping we get world record right now. I'm working on this shit.
Uh, my favorite part of the run, I get to check Twitter. It's a good time. Hmm. Let's see. But yeah. How's it going, Dark Kitty? That's the problem with this run, though. This whole minute down here, you see this time? Look at this time. I want you to look at this time. It doesn't matter. This is a run that doesn't matter until it's over. And I know a lot of people say that to hype themselves up and make sure they're not out of the game. No, no, no. This game is just... If you're not at the ending, it doesn't matter. And the final boss is so kind or mean, it all comes down to RNG. And that's kind of the why this category isn't as... Uh, ran as it should be. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, the final boss is just brutal. Which one? Is it me shouting? I want to believe. It's a good one. It's other than sandpaper? It is. That's what we call our Cocaine Mary. Imagine your wife was on cocaine. And you needed to put her down. With a pillow. James is trying to do it. But the problem is, you don't get it. Also, here's your out-of-bounds deck, everyone. You put your feet through here. You walk. You walk. First try. You go through the stairs. You merge through the wall. And then by doing so, you just walk into the void. So the way this game is actually programmed is really weird. Uh, it's actually kind of neat when you think about it. But the thing is, uh, with this game, all the rooms are actually just really far apart from each other. So the way that loads work whenever you go through a door is that uh, the moment you walk through one, it teleports you to a different room because they're just really far away from each other. So that being said, if you run out of bounds, you can actually make it to the other rooms and phase through the wall because they're not really, you know, you can go through them in certain ways. Me too, but we'll see, Diamond Dogs. We'll see. I saw it on the soundboard? I do. I do. But I haven't played it in a while. I don't really have too much on the soundboard. I like soundboard stuff. I just... I can never get into it myself. I can't remember if I added... I added one thing to the soundboard recently. Because it made me laugh. That's about it. But even then, I don't really use the soundboard. Because I don't have a lot of situations where it makes sense. I only need the one bit. Well, I mean, my favorite sound happens at 5,000 bits. But... That's all I'll say. It makes me laugh. I would not expect anything for that. Making a small game again? In which... Wait, where the fuck am I? In which sense? There we go. God damn. This is a little bit sloppy, but not bad. You mean like programming a game? And we'll see here. We'll see this now. Here's this. We'll see. This run usually goes out of the way. It's a fun game. It just... Heavily based in RNG. At least with the ending of this game. See. Not bad. Oh, is it kind of like one of those, uh, kind of like marbles, in a sense. But not marbles, but like marbles. How's it going to Fonz? I like your name. Hope you're having a good day. It's like Fonzie, or is it Fonz? Or different, entirely Fonz? Or is it Defones? If it's Defones, I'll be very sad, because I was thinking like Fonz, like Fonzie, and then I was like, hey, but I guess it could technically not be Fonzie. I was like Fonzie, man. That's why I had an A emote. It's Fonzie. See, A. The Fonz is cool. Yeah. All right, by the way, bada boom, bada bing, the word's time. This is a 1 in 19 chance. I, uh, I know all the answers. Watch. Call on right now. Uh, time. You got it. Time. It's easy when you know all the answers ahead of time. Not bad. Dude, developing sounds badass. There's just a lot more programming that I would like to do, personally. I like the idea of game design, but the problem is there's a lot more programming than I could want. One. Two. I know all about the graveyard shake. I mean, you can try, but it's normally not worth it because you you honestly just want to get runs. If you spend too much time trying to get a perfect seed, you mess up it all, you have to do it again. Well, that, that's good then, I guess, the dank. I guess that works. That's just random every time? Which one, the boxes or the, the, the suitcase? Suitcase is random 119. The boxes are always the same. 
I not like programming? I majored in computer science when I was in college. I am definitely sick of it. I do not want to do it anymore. There's a reason why I stopped. A few reasons, actually. Suitcase is 119. This is one of my favorite scary games. This is probably my top two. I saw this or Devotion for my favorites. It'd be neat. A normal speed again? I have. Hell, I've done it at better than normal speed. Revy, have you not seen my Great Knife Only run? I was majoring in law? I did major in law. I had a minor in computer science because originally my major was comp sci. I just don't like comp sci. Oh, if you want to see me go at normal speed, you can watch the Great Knife Only speed run. Whenever I do sound old too, I offer it at uh, a certain amount of subs because it's a shit post. I normally do, I think, 50 cumulative because it's a long run and that's what I did last time for it and it's fitting. If you're wondering what a Great Knife Only is, you're only allowed to move with a Great Knife, which is really fucking slow. It is the worst weapon in the game because you can barely move. It takes 30 minutes to get to the first level of the game, and it's hilarious. But I did it recently, which is why I'm making the big thing on it. Alright. Alright, time for the final boss. Final boss is actually really easy. Watch. Run in the corner, turn around, great knife. And... Oh, didn't you do that? It's funny. Perfect, by the way. You just bonk the knife on the wall. Oh, double hit. It's actually a really tight strategy. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not easy. Music? Hey, it's classics. Oh, you're dead. Fuck. I jumped the gun. I if I ever get back into programming, maybe I'll look into game dev, but for right now I'm kind of chill just playing the games. If I'm a part of any game, I'll let you know, chat. Comp size is neat, it just Alright. I had to take one class. No, some of two looks still around. I think they use a different name these days, but they're still around other streams. I haven't seen them in our stream since, but they're still around. Like they exist. They're normally around Aaron's stream, I think, actually. So uh they're around. They're 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 lurking. Mary, what do you want? They're chilling. Yeah. yeah. So they're not they're not I dead. They're they're, they're alive. Powers. Powers. Hell, I think technically they have the unofficial world record for like every category. Mary, the only thing is they don't submit to speedrun.com for some reason, or put it on anywhere. I don't know why. Anyway, now we need to bless. Hell, you know what, chat? You know what? If I get world record, we'll do a plank only run. If I get world record right now, I'll do plank only or great knife only for the rest of the stream, depending on how we go. I'm thinking plank only. Good movement, by the way. Stopped when I needed to, didn't run a lot fast. No! Uh, Alright, don't fuck me up. Slap. I'm, I whiffed it, you're kidding me. I actually whiffed it. How did I whiff that? One. Two. Enigma, gifting a sub level. Thank you very much, Mr. Enigma. That's much appreciated. Three. Come on. That's fine. I'm eating a crab. This is good. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you, Mr. Enigma. It's much appreciated. Enjoy the emotes in the scissors level. And thank you for being here and for the raid. I'm eating that. Yeah. So, but you're wondering, what's the problem here? Well, what's this run exactly do? So, I have to swing the knife roughly about that timing. 
Uh, there are three attacks I can get. I can get little tentacles sprouting out of her, which is not bad. If I get slapped, uh, I can get moths, which is bad. I can get grabbed, which is the worst. Um, moths aren't bad for damage, they're bad for time. Oh my god, wait a minute, wait a minute. There it is, oh my fucking god. This ain't even a PB, this is fucking world record, baby. Holy shit. What a ro okay, we're doing plank only now. I knew we'd get it, I knew we'd eventually get it. I was so close to the fucking 44, that's a run. A minute 30, I've been waiting for this shit. I've literally been waiting. I can't tell you how fucking long it's been. One run. You know what you got? One run. Good Eddie. Dragon! The ten gift of subs of the community going to Star Lord, Divine Spar, Synth, Scorpio, Darth, Thundercat, Eggdonator, or Egg Eggdicator, uh, Svols, Hoen. I just. Oh wait, you, you just got here. Barizzle, Egg thank you very much. And Negwa, they were the 2000 biddies. It's very much appreciated. Holy fuck, dude. Look at this shit. Fucking minute 30. God damn. Like, let me let me tell you. Let me let me let me tell you why this is fucking hype. Every run I did. Hey, I get the fleshless. I die. Play it? Fine. You get one. You get one of these. You get one. However, you'll owe at least one bit, T-Rex. You'll owe at least one bit. Here you go. I think it's this one. I wanna believe! I see I got it. I still have it. You get one. You're gonna ban this if someone beats it? Uh, I'm taking a break from this fucking category, at least. Um, a little bit. We'll go a little. I'm gonna do, um, I wanna work on Plank only now. Cause I'm, I wanna do a new melee category for Silent Hill 2. But like, alright, let me just explain really quick. With this fucking category, I would die to the, I would die to the second boss every time. Alright, I didn't die to the second boss, Mary would ruin the run. Oh hey, Mary was good this time, Eddie would ruin the run. This is the first fucking run my first fucking run well thank you now here's this for the five bits and thank you demon king for the tier one for five months it's very much appreciated and no you i am putting this on youtube this is good shit like getting a mary also i golded i golded that shit baby that wasn't even just fucking good that was gold that was literally literally the best it can be. Spent death the tier one for nine months. That's a baby. That's a baby. How's it going, Mango Man? 